Okay, we're back. Uh, this is theCUBE, SiliconAngle.tv's continuous coverage of Oracle Open World 2012. We're here at the Moscone Center in San Francisco. This is our third year of having theCUBE inside the Moscone. We have to be a gorilla, as we've ex been explaining to you. We're inside the Logic booth. They've been really kind and gracious uh, with their space. And it allows us to broadcast, to extract the signal from the noise, and bring you the smartest people that we can find in the community. And this is the backup and recovery segment where we're talking about Oracle backup and recovery. And we're here with uh, one of the leading practitioners uh, in the world here, uh, Tony Vaden, who's the Vice President and CIO of ATD, American Tire Distributors, a CUBE alum. Tony, welcome back. Good, Dave, good to be here, thanks for having me. So, we're here at Oracle Open World. Um, obviously, you're, you're an Oracle customer. Absolutely. Um, and this is quite an event, you know, 45, thousand people, people take over San Francisco, can't find a cheap hotel room. Or um, a room period. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, so Oracle's really an interesting company. So what do you guys do with, with Oracle? What, what brings you to Oracle Open World? Well, Oracle is uh, basically the backbone of our systems. Uh, we've been deploying or have had some level of e-business suite, 11i, in our uh, environment for almost 10 years at some capacity. Um, we have basically a distribution model across the entire U.S. and we have a lot of hourly, actually, uh, transactions per second for order entry uh, for the business and logistics perspective of delivering, receiving tires to uh, retail tires, uh, companies, independents, uh, big box or corporate retail companies, and even the auto dealers. So uh, e-business has always been our core. We've expanded on that uh, in the last few years with things like SOA, uh, with a lot of the e-commerce business, uh, with intelligence and a lot of other activities that really encapsulate that e-business core. So you guys are a critical part, obviously, of the, uh, the, the automotive supply chain. Um, yes. How has technology affected your business over the last 10 years or so? Uh, it's been quite transformative for us. Uh, probably four or five, six years ago, you know, it was really an evolving model, uh, especially with the independent tire dealer. We really represent them uh, as a smaller footprint out in the, in the industry for them to be successful. Uh, and transactionally, it's just amazing the data that we've gathered, the data transactions that we get, it's just exploded for us. And it, it just the sub-second responses that we need to take an order, process the order, and have it near time for the customer. A lot of times we'll have a customer either go online and order a product or call in, literally get in their truck and come to the distribution center. It's there on a the dock waiting for them. So one of the big things that we do, uh, is value add for our customer, is have that product ready for them. And what Oracle's allowed us to do is really have um, what our CEO calls the secret sauce of the business is to be able to transactionally and logistically have the product there when they need it. Yeah, so uh, a lot of people talk about how, you know, remember the book, Does IT Matter? Yes. Um, <laughs> and you as a CIO, I'm sure, have you know, felt that, uh, that, that pain of, of budget cuts and the right. like. And the premise of the book was essentially that IT doesn't deliver a competitive advantage that's sustainable. Um, you, I think, would based on what you just said, would disagree with that. I mean, oh, absolutely. It's given you a sustainable, differentiable competitive advantage, hasn't it? Yeah, we wouldn't be in business today <laughs> if we didn't. I mean, you'd be out of business. We would be out technology. of business. I mean, if you think about just the pure logistics, shipping a tire and a wheel, it's, you know, it may seem simple, but having the product in the right distribution center for the right type of customer. Uh, and if you look across the company, uh, the country in the U.S., you look at a place like Miami where they have a lot of wheels. It's a big business in our market. You go out to the Midwest, a place like Nebraska where agricultural products are very pervasive. Uh, and you go out to other, uh, like the Northwest, Northeast where the winter tire products are actually selling today. Uh, we've probably been a huge business for a month now. Uh, without having a lot of supply chain visibility, a lot of transaction capability, store the right data, uh, looking at things like big data, being able to go out and look at the abstract data that's available to us, something we've never dreamed of two or three years ago. So even the future where we're going, uh, I see a lot of opportunity. Yeah, and potentially even larger. We talked a lot on theCUBE about the transformative effects of, of technology generally, but specifically big data and having potentially a bottom line impact. Do you see, Tony, the, the day in which you know, the, the, the CEO in the corner office of your organization says, you know what, I actually see this, let's say in a case of big data, the advantages it can bring. I'm going to double down on that. I'm actually going to spend more. Do you, do you see that day coming, or is it going to be do more with less? I see it. I, you know, I think a, a lot of folks that aren't in IT 
struggle with understanding things. I mean, just look at the nomenclature of the acronyms that we have. It's mind boggling. It's mind boggling yeah. for us that are in it every day. <laughs> so if you look at those, but I think if you, you provide proven success, uh, you demonstrate capability by delivering on time and quality. Uh, that, that goes a long way with the CEO and the CFO and the COO and looking how you're delivering for them. You know, the last two or three years, we've pushed the envelope on virtualization, how we've been able to replicate to our secondary data center, what we've done with the elimination of tape, uh, and all those seem very uh, tactical, but at the end of the day, if we can't recover and fail over and, and support the business, um, they get nervous. So I think they've looked at what I would call grow from the core. Right, if you look at cloud computing being prepared for that, uh, if you don't really have a roadmap, roadmap and a technology direction, uh, it's hard to get to things like big data because you don't have the data to do it with. Right, now one of the, the processes that, that CEOs and CIOs don't want to overspend on or spend too much on is insurance, protecting yes, their right. data. Right? And that's really what you know, backup and, and recovery is all about. It's, it's an insurance policy. Uh, so you clearly want to make it as efficient as possible. You want to make sure it works, meets its objectives, but you know, it's not necessarily going to drive sustainable competitive business right. advantage. It's table stakes, it's fundamental. You've got your corporate data, you've got to protect it. So talk about how you protect your data, what your strategy is, and how that's evolved over the last several years. Okay. Um, I'll go back about three or four years. We had basically a tape model. Uh, we had a very disparaged uh, storage environment. We, we really, for lack of a better term, would buy an appliance for the type of storage, whether it be a tier three or tier two. This was before cloud or virtualization and the storage layer was very pervasive. Um, and so as we saw the value in what we had done with server virtualization and partnering with EMC, uh, we really saw that strategy start to unfold. So building blocks of building server virtualization, uh, how we connected both of our data centers really to become much more than a DR, it's really moved to a failover now to really almost a high availability model. Uh, we use a common innovation of data domain, uh, two VNX integration model, two VNX storage devices or environments between both data centers that we interface with a recovery point and manage that ability to uh, replicate or move back and forth with recovery manager. So it's really turned into quite a, uh, if you look at the EM product suite, the, they've knitted together very nicely to help us be successful. So can we drill into that a little bit? So using, you're using uh, uh, recover point, you said? Yes. And so you're taking snapshots in time? Yes. So you dial up or down, you set your RPO, do you do that by application or? Um, actually, no. Uh, we do it holistically across the board because okay. what we've committed to to our business is really the ability to recover the environment in total if needed. So that way, if you look at the, the cost of storage and what we're look, willing to do from a footprint, we, we have a light-for-light -light copy of everything in both of our data centers. So you essentially have a platinum service for all your apps. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And, and you said you used a combination of data domain and VNX, so talk about the, you brought in data domain three years ago? That's when we first started. We probably put in production data domain about two years ago. So that was post-acquisition, yes. is that right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, our, our goal initially was to, to try to find a strategy for the disparate systems we had, especially in the storage area. So, building the model to get the data replicated was our first step, but quickly we realized that that was only part of the story. Uh, and then when we looked at data domain and how we would manage the duplication and archiving is another piece of how we're trying to be successful, uh, again, it just like, it was really a, a, a complete package to, to do that together. So. I wouldn't say you re-architected your backup processes per se, but you certainly changed the way in which you did backup. Or did it affect, did it change your backup processes? Well, it simplified it. Yeah, okay. You know, we, before we were looking at what should we back up first. From a timing perspective, the data got so large, the Oracle production database continues, and it continues to grow even though we archive it, it still continues to grow. So we looked at being creative at what times of the day we could back up uh, before some of the systems power had grown either at the storage layer or at the server layer, we were always orchestrating how we dealt with that. Today, it's really just automated. I don't want to say it's so simple, but it, it is. So, essentially, you uh, were prioritizing what got backed up. And when, yes. Because if you had to miss something, it couldn't be your production database. Absolutely, Oracle database, uh, bar none, was the most important thing we backed up. Right, how much data are you managing? Uh, we have almost a petabyte of storage in production, now two if you count the fact that we've doubled, doubled it, and really more than that because our secondary location 
we have uh, we do our dev and test in our failover location, um, and de so dev and test is an ex kind of an additional piece of the storage that we have from production. So it's a little over two petabytes. Okay, and and so you're using recover. Point to take snapshots. Yes, and then you back it up locally, and then you push it off. Well, the recovery or? point we do really more for continuous stream. So right, it's, so it's continuous yeah, data so protection. It's, it's data. So when a transaction hits production, it's replicated directly to our failover location. And what's the RPO? Um, five minutes. Oh wow! Yeah. So that really is a platinum service. Yeah. For the entire organization. Yeah. So, what's the? Have you had to test the recovery? I mean, I know you test it, but have you had to test it in real life? We. Only for individual file deletions or, yeah. you know, probably where it's more pervasive has been in a dev test world, where a developer will blow away a test environment where they've worked weeks on, and you know, they get to the point where uh, they did something, they blew up a clone database of Oracle, and they're two days away from going live and it's gone. Uh, so the good news is we've not had to test it from a failure of the system or anything in production. We do test, we do unit testing, is what I call it in our, Q, in our, in our um, uh, DR facility. Uh, but, you know, in the, back in the old days, de development and QA was probably the last thing we backed up. But that's the one we end up recovering the most. Ah, oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, now you mentioned virtualization before. What are you doing in, in that regard? Uh, we are almost 100% server virtualized. Um, we. The one item we haven't put in production is Oracle Rack, but we have tested it in our it's, I'm sorry, Oracle what? Rack, oh, Rack right, Node. Okay. Uh, it's actually in production in our DR facility. So we know that it works. Uh, we just, it's just been a workload issue for them not being 100%. So, um, so you use VMware? Or? Yes. Yeah, so you're yeah. virtualizing almost all your apps, except yes. for Rack, which is, I think Rack is the one <laughs> system that Oracle actually will embrace yes. <laughs> VMware, <laughs> right? But everything else, the sort of little friction there, right? What's your experience been with regard to virtualizing Oracle? Many of the customers we've talked to say, works great, never yep. really had a problem. Yep, that's our story. And it's your relationship was, in, in Oracle's, maybe at first, was not all for it, uh, or did you get some friction there, or how'd that all work you out? You know, we've got a great account team with Oracle and with EMC, and it's been a partnership along the way. You know, and, and you know the folks like in the support organization with Oracle, I think as long as you engage them and tell them what you're doing uh, and share the knowledge of what you've done, it, it works well. Right. Um, and then, you know, Oracle, so again, they're such a big partner to what we do, we couldn't avoid that, you know? And I think instead of, a lot of times people have a, a, an abrasive relationship and tell the customer or tell the supplier what quote they're going to do, and that's just not the approach we take. We sit down and plan in advance and say, look, it's the right thing for us, uh, and if we ever had to recover, uh, Oracle certainly doesn't want us not to recover quickly. So at least the account team I have and the part of Oracle I've worked with have done nothing but be supportive. Excellent. That's yeah. uh, I have to say, that's not a common theme that you <laughs> hear. So may maybe your approach is one that other practitioners in the community we might want to think about. Yeah. Um, how about cloud? Um, we've seen a lot this week about Oracle's cloud strategy. Uh, you know, you have to laugh and tongue in cheek. We were, John Furrier, my coast and I were watching this morning Larry Ellison's rant from the Churchill Club when he was saying <laughs> cloud is water vapor. And in many right. respects, he was right on. Um, and now we got the Oracle Cloud and you know, almost like they invented it. <laughs> and so, right. But what do you make of the cloud strategy at, at, at Oracle? And what's your cloud strategy? How's it dovetail? Well, you know, I, let me start with ours first. Uh, we, we started cloud before it was called cloud. I mean, we, we back again four or five years ago, probably when uh, the ESX 2.0, the first one or 2.0 VMware models, uh, we've been on a heavy focus of uh, server virtualization. As a matter of fact, we have no more physical servers today than I did five years ago. But our environment's probably five or 10 times bigger wow. than it was five years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so for us, we've always had that path, and you know, I think the one thing we have added is um, storage virtualization, and a lot of the ancillary things. So for me, I look at it twofold. One is the core. Build from the core has always been somewhat our strategy. And, and the, the, what I mean by that is, if you build an internal infrastructure as a service type approach, whether you provision or you charge back or any of that stuff, the way I look at it is you've already built your application to be a cloud service. You just happen to be serving it to yourself. Right, so a lot of the, the Oracle products we have are internally virtualized and on our internal cloud. 
Uh, but we even went external. Our budgeting software, we went CRM, we did a lot of things like our uh, HR applications, our time in attendance, uh, travel, you know, a lot of those things are in the cloud. They're very simple to plug into the cloud. Uh, we've implemented SOA services from Oracle and a lot of their REST APIs who let us integrate the data exchange. So if you create a, a service to present the data and receive the data, it actually makes it simplified. Excellent. Uh, it's worked right. well. Tony, appreciate you coming on theCUBE. We're out of time and you've been really generous with your time. It was a pleasure seeing you again. Absolutely. All right, Thank keep you. it right there. We'll be right back with our next segment on the Oracle Backup and Recovery Spotlight live from the Moscone Center in San Francisco. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's coverage. We'll be right back.